This is your High Desert Sports Report, the Victor Valley's only weekly action highlights sports program, covering our area's schools, teams, athletes, and sporting events. Avery Brandon brings up his second save in his team's third win, getting the last four outs against Bakersfield in the Yardbirds' 6-3 victory over the Train Robbers in High Desert's 2018 home opener. Avery Brandon induces former Yardbird Shane Sharkey to ground out to third baseman Kent Blackstone for the final out. Two saves, two nights in a row, Avery? Uh, a night in between, but a lot of fun. Man. How do you find your role? What's it like to be back? Uh, man, it's a great feeling to have the fans behind you and uh, be able to go out and do what I love, man. That's all I care about. Another pair of fellow returning Yardbirds, outfielders Dominic Zayer and Ronnie Grant contribute to the first two runs of the ball game. Dominic Zayer's base hit up the middle, Ronnie Grant scoring from third, followed closely by super speedster Demetrius Moore, two to nothing high desert in the third. The ever exciting and excitable Ronnie Grant lifts a two out pop up over the infield that sends Aaron Cook across, breaking a 2 2 tie in the sixth. Ronnie Grant has hit safely in each of the Yardbirds' first four games, as has shortstop Aaron Cook, second baseman Steve Longo, and left fielder Demetrius Moore. Dominic Zayer's double down the left field line enables the often running Demetrius Moore to score easily from first. High Desert's lead is 4-2 to two in the seventh. Three runs driven in on the night for Dominic Zayer. Steve Longo follows with the base hit through the left side of the train robbers infield. It sends Dominic Zayer home, extending the Yardbirds lead to 5-2. to two. Demetrius Moore drives in Jake Marshall from second, bouncing the ball off the bounce realty sign in deep center field for an insurance run in the bottom of the eighth, extending the Yardbirds lead to three, six to three. One of four Demetrius Moore base hits on the night. The victory is the third in a row for High Desert after the Yardbirds dropped their season opener at California City. Jordan Norton is the Game 4 starter for Sip Garza's Yardbirds. Two of the Seymour, Tennessee second year Yardbirds' five strikeouts come in the first inning. Jordan Norton is 24. He pitched at Marysville University in Tennessee and is now the pitching coach for his alma mater. No strikeout this night more rewarding to Yardbirds fans than when Jordan Norton rings up former Yardbird Shane Sharkey, the designated beer batter of the game. Beer at half price for 15 minutes upon getting Shane Sharkey swinging in the fourth. The Yardbirds offense begins to click in the third, ignited by the bottom of the batting order. Ronnie Grant has walked. Jordan Norton bunts Ronnie Grant to second for the first out of the inning. Leadoff hitter Demetrius Moores, high chopper on a 3 and one pitch. Shortstop Steve Pasquale has to hurry to get Demetrius Moore. First baseman Nick Vealwald comes off the bag and misses the tag. This video sports camera angle clearly shows Demetrius Moore evades the tag and it is an easy call to make for umpire Keith Sabo from his vantage point. Outstanding camera work, RTTK. Runners at the corners. Demetrius Moore steals second on the next pitch. The Homestead, Florida 24-year-old already has seven stolen bases, tops in the Pecos League. Dominic Zayer tees off on train robbers, starter and former Yardbird, Zach Cameron sending the base hit back up the middle. Ronnie Grant scores, then Demetrius Moore close behind. First two RBIs on the night for second year Yardbird, Dominic Zayer, who doubles in a third run driven in in the seventh. In the fourth, switch hitting shortstop Aaron Cook beats out the infield hit, the grounder to train robbers counterpart Steve Pasquale. But Aaron Cook is stranded. Aaron Cook, Pecos League rookie from Denver, and four still. 
two nothing Yardbirds. Jordan Norton strikes out Bakersfield cover part Zach Cameraman for a second time for the first out in the fifth. Jordan Norton unleashes 83 pitches in this first night of work in the new season. 46 of those pitches strikes. The train robbers mount a threat with two outs, Sonny Cortez the single to right. Bobby Webb follows with the hardest hit ball by a Bakersfield batter this night, the single to center field that puts train robbers at the corners. This brings out skipper Sip Garza, the youthful Yardbirds manager. Sip Garza is 28. He pitched in the Pecos League with Salinas in 2016 and appeared in four games last year as player manager of the California City Whiptails. Catcher Jake Marshall saves a run blocking the pitch in the dirt. First of a number of run saving defensive efforts by the Arlington, Virginia rookie you'll see this night. Jordan Norton and the Yardbirds escape the inning. First baseman Shane Brown fields the hard hit ground ball off the bat of Toby Marino, stranding the pair of train robbers. And at the midway point of the contest, High Desert continues to hold a two to nothing lead. Demetrius Moore sends the ground ball through the middle, one of his four base hits this game. It comes with one out in the bottom of the fifth. Dominic Zayer's comebacker is bobbled by Zach Cameraman, whose throw to first just does get Dominic Zayer, but first baseman Nick Bielewald goes down, suffering the hurtful effects of having his foot occupy too much of the bag at first. Nick Bielewald, not the only player to go down with an injury in this hard-fought battle between Pecos League rivals, he will remain in the game. Zach Cameraman and the train robbers strand Demetrius Moore a third when Shane Brown pops up to former Yardbirds teammate Shane Sharkey at third. Shane Sharkey, Zach Cameraman, later Jonathan Fleckenstein, three former Yardbirds seeing action against High Desert this game. Six ex-Yardbirds are on the Bakersfield roster. Bakersfield goes right back at it against Jordan Norton in the sixth. Sip Garza revisits the mound when the train robbers load the bases with nobody out. Sip Garza is not actually disclosing his bullpen rotation with this longtime video journalist, although he appears to be explaining his strategy to this sportscaster. Catcher Jake Marshall again saving a run, blocking the pitch in the dirt. Tough night for Bakersfield first baseman Nick Bielwald, who goes down a second time, fouling this one off that very sensitive area halfway between the belt buckle and the knees. Nick Bielwald stays in to draw the bases loaded walk that enables Bakersfield's first run to score and brings Jeremy Barth in from the bullpen. The 6'4", Jeremy Barth played at Palo Verde's El Camino College and Biola University. Jeremy Barth was a power hitter not a power pitcher in high school and college, 302 hitter his junior year at Biola, then team leader in triples his senior year. This is his rookie season in the Pecos League. His debut definitely baptism under fire, bases loaded, nobody out, tying run at third. Jeremy Barth strikes out Zach Cameraman for the first out of the inning. Then retires leadoff hitter Steve Pasqual on the pop-up to Steve Longo at second before walking Sonny Cortez, forcing in the tying run. The train robbers have stolen High Desert's lead. Bakersfield ties the score without the benefit of a base hit. Jeremy Barth minimizes further damage, getting Bobby Webb to ground out to Steve Longo to end the inning. Both runs charged to Jordan Norton. We go to the bottom of the sixth, a brand new ball game. High Desert retaliates, regaining the lead in the sixth. Kent Blackstone has singled and stolen second. Kent Blackstone survives the base running blunder, running into the out at third on Aaron Cook's ground ball to short. Kent Blackstone resorts to base running magic to avoid the tag and celebrates with a shimmy and a bit of impromptu boogaloo in the process. 
Blackstone's magic does not enable him to escape the tag at home, however, as he again breaks on contact, running into the out at the plate. Aaron Cook and Jake Marshall are aboard with two out, still a 2-2 ball game. This is where Ronnie Grant's good fortune comes into play. The pop-up over the infield drops in. Aaron Cook scoring the go-ahead run, scoring from second. Four games into the very young season, Ronnie Grant leads Yardbirds hitters with a 385 batting average. Dominic Zayers double into the left field corner in the seventh enables Demetrius Moore to score easily from first, giving High Desert a two-run lead, four to two. Steve Longo follows with the base hit just past the diving shortstop. The clutch two-out base hit sends Dominic Zayer home, extending the Yardbirds' lead to 5-2. to two. We go to the eighth. Bakersfield has added a run in their half of the eighth. Demetrius Moore drives in Jake Marshall from second, bouncing the ball off the bounce realty sign in deep center field for an insurance run that restores the Yardbirds' three-run lead 6-3. to three. Stage set for Avery Brandon's heroics. Avery Brandon registered a save in High Desert's first win two nights earlier in California City. Fitting finale in that it is Shane Sharkey making the final out. Save number two in two opportunities, closing out the 6-3 home opener triumph. Uh, man, it's a great feeling to have the fans behind you and uh, be able to go out and do what I love, man. That's all I care about. Keep doing it. Congratulations. See you next time out. Thank you. Nice job. Your High Desert Sports Report is brought to you by Down Home Grill in Victorville on the corner of Bear Valley Road and Ridgecrest Drive. The world-class auctioneers at I-15 Auctions. Bid fast, bid last. I-15 Auctions. Midway Home Solutions in Victorville, providing highest quality home appliances at discount prices for six decades. And Iwan Zak Law Firm, trial lawyers for serious problems. And by the Community Table Restaurant in the Holiday Inn in Victorville, supporting high desert teams, athletes, and sports programs. The obvious disappointment of Oak Hill's extra inning playoff loss to Hemet overshadows outstanding individual performances at the plate by these Bulldogs, underclassmen, who offer promise of Oak being serious contenders for a third straight MRL championship season in 2019. Juniors Brandon Bullock and Zach Becker go a combined 7 for 10 in this game and 12 for 17 in the postseason. Eight of Oak Hill's 11 hits by underclassmen in the 4-3 setback to Hemet. John Bike starts for Oak Hills, the third start of the season for the senior Southpaw, who was plagued by arm problems early in the season. He had been the winner in relief in the first round win over Cerritos. Typical wind-blown afternoon in May at the Bulldogs' compound in Esperia. The visiting Bulldogs push across an unearned run in the first en route to a 3 to nothing lead after hitting in the third. John Bike goes on to strike out two in his final performance in an Oak Hills uniform. John Bike bound for NCAA Division III Laverne University, where he will play next for those Leopards. Zach Becker gets the first Oak Hills base hit, the single up the middle with two out in the first. Zach Becker will go four for five this game, giving him seven hits in nine at-bats in postseason play. Oak Hills places Brandon Bullock in scoring position, moving him to third on Steve Rubio's sack fly in the second. Brandon Bullock had singled first hit of a three for five day for the junior outfielder, but he is stranded. Bottom of the third, Freddie Castro blisters the line drive past the diving center fielder. Freddie Castro, 292 hitting Oak Hills senior. Oak Hills, the top hitting team in the Mojave River League, a 364 team batting average. Julian Macias bunts Freddie Castro into scoring position. The speedy Julian Macias called out on a very close play at first. Freddy Castro is able to scamper to third on the pop-up down the right field line that drops in off the bat of Zach Becker. 
John Bike, who had walked, advancing to second. Oak Hill's first run comes as a gift. Hemet's catcher frames the called strike three for the second out, but the catcher thinks it is the third out of the inning and rolls the ball back to the mound. Freddie Castro races home, and Oak Hill's has cut the Hemet lead to three to one. Brandon Bullock's two-out pop-up down the right field line drops in. John Bike scores, followed by Zach Becker. Brandon Bullock's two-run double ties the game at three, end of three. Michael Downs has come on to replace John Bike on the mound. Like John Bike, Mike Downs, a Laverne University commit. The 5'11", 165-pound senior shuts down Hammett over four and two-thirds innings, striking out four. The only thing unlucky about Mike Downs' 13th appearance on the year, the bad luck Hammett hitters have facing him. Mike Downs' senior season resume will conclude with 20 strikeouts in 21-plus innings of work. Freddie Castro gets his second consecutive hit, leading off the Oak Hills half of the fourth. We have seen Hemet defenders have problems with the high wind gusts of the high desert. Not a problem for Oak Hills players, John Bike, snagging the pop-up from the swirling winds to end this inning. But nothing routine about the Julian Macias routine here. Julian Macias, actually an outstanding catch on the wind-blown pop-up, Julian Macias, a sophomore, Oaks starting infield, all underclassmen, fellow sophomores Jacob Rangel at first, Steve Rubio at second, junior Zach Becker at third. Even greater degree of difficulty on center fielder Dylan Randall's extraordinary catch at the fence to end the Hemet half of the fifth. Dylan Randall's Oak Hills senior defensive specialist. Oak Hills, a golden opportunity to take the lead in the sixth. Brandon Bullock leading off with the base hit. Brandon Bullock's 486 batting average on the year, second only to Burroughs Chase Craycroft among Mojave River League hitters. Brandon Bullock just does beat the throw to second on the Jacob Rangel bunt that puts runners at second and first with nobody out. Jacob Rangel, the versatile Oak Hills sophomore, a 358 hitter on the gear. The small ball plan of attack continues. Steve Rubio's perfectly placed bunt results in a base hit for the sophomore second baseman. It loads the bases with nobody out. Hemet gets the first out of the inning on the comebacker expertly handled by pitcher Steve Wright to just get the force at home. Back-to-back -back strikeouts of Oaks number nine and leadoff hitters in the threat and the inning. Hemet mounts a threat in the seventh, two out double to straightaway center field off the bat of two-hole hitter Joel Mesa. It will be Joel Mesa who will drive in the game-winning run in the ninth. Mike Downs works himself out of this threat, inducing the top Hemet hitter to pop up to Jacob Rangel, who has moved to center field to end Hemet's half of the seventh. Oak Hills, right back on the attack in the bottom of the seventh. John Bikes, hard hit ground ball up the middle, misplayed. Hemet's outfield deep for Zach Becker whose base hit to center is bobbled, but the Oak Hills pinch runner does not advance to third, a base running decision that proves decisive. Oak Hills RBI leader, Kian Costigan, at the plate, nobody out. When Kian Costigan squares to bunt and takes the pitch, the pinch runner strays too far off second and is called out on another very close play on the bases. Base running ever number two. In this inning, the third comes when Oaks' runner on first is picked off for out number two. Hemet then gets the strikeout to send the game into extra innings. Julian Macias comes on for Oak Hills in the eighth. He sets the bottom of the Hemet lineman up, up and down in order. We go to the game deciding at bat in the ninth. The two-out drive over the head of the Oak Hills center fielder sends in the go-ahead run, but Oak Hills comes right back with a vengeance. Julian Macias, leadoff single, drops over the infield and puts the tying run 
on in the bottom of the ninth. Two outs later, Kian Costigan's infield base hit puts Zach Becker in scoring position. He represents the tying run. Kian Costigan, the potential game-winning run. But Oak Hills is down to their last out. It comes on Brandon Bullock's laser to center field. Hemet celebrates as it eliminates Oak Hills. Their 21-win season ending in the second round of CIF Division IV playoffs. Your High Desert Sports Report is brought to you by Down Home Grill in Victorville on the corner of Bear Valley Road and Ridgecrest Drive. The world-class auctioneers at I-15 Auctions. Bid fast, bid last, I-15 Auctions. Midway Home Solutions in Victorville, providing highest quality home appliances at discount prices for six decades. And Iwan Zak Law Firm, trial lawyers for serious problems. And by the Community Table Restaurant in the Holiday Inn in Victorville, supporting high desert teams, athletes, and sports programs. Uh, I'm Natalie Leos. I am actually um, a drum major for the band. I am in the Great Academy at Granite Hills. My name is Jenna Shaddles. I'm part of a, the Great Academy here at Granite Hills High School. I have so many opportunities with the Great Academy because we have uh, Pro Tools, we're getting Adobe Suites, and Pro Tools is uh, basically our studio professional recording equipment. It's what the top artists nowadays use. Makes it super easy, you can manipulate sounds, and I've already worked with it so many times on multiple occasions, and it's one of my favorite pastimes. As you know, we just sit there, and it allows me to turn some of my dreams of like having this because it's it's career technical education. We have this new recording studio and so with the recording studio we're able to record our vocals and people playing instruments and put them together and then it's the stuff that like the professional singers nowadays use and so then we're able to like change our vocals and like make it higher pitch or add echoes to it. The GREAT stands for obviously Granite Recording and Entertainment Arts Training. Uh, the instrumental portion of it is just to supplement our other four components. It, there really is four components to the Great Academy. We're unveiling the first two here in this next year, and we'll be subsequently unveiling the next two components over the subsequent years, and that will be uh, drama and then dance. The thing that, um, that we found that we didn't necessarily think was lacking, but that we could better service our students was to offer them um, a connection with what they're learning in our programs with what they can actually take with them into the job market. It's, it's career technical education, so it's helping me be ready for the career that I want because I want to go into music production and it's making my dreams a reality. Here at Granite Hills, we have four great choirs led by our amazing uh, choir teacher, Mr. Churchill. He has Serenade and Bravo, which aren't the audition choirs, but they're just as amazing. This year they went to Knott's Berry Farm and competed and Serenade, the all-girls choir, they got second place and Bravo, they got first place and I'm so proud of them. They're so great this year. And then he has two varsity choirs they have to audition for and it's Encore, his show choir, and Chambers, his more um, typical type of choir you'd expect him to have or expect a choir to be. And so this year we went to San Francisco for a tour and it was so fun. It was my first time going and I absolutely loved it. I love spending time with all my friends and for four whole days and not going to school. But <laughs> And so it was great. Um, Encore got silver first place and I believe Chambers got silver second place and it was just amazing overall. Well, something that um, we did do was that we went to Disneyland and, you know, um, we were, we went to Forum Festival and we got a gold rating, which basically means we are top 10% in the nation. Yeah. And, um, you know, going to Disneyland, being able to go with all my friends and it's cool being able to be in these programs because you're surrounded by people who have the same passion you do and about the same level of love for what you want to do and it's one of the coolest things in the world because they really are great people and it's a really great experience to be around because not only are you sitting here doing what you love you're getting rewarded for it and you get to expand upon it you get experience for what you want to do in the future so many people look at the uh, performing arts and go oh yeah there's that's just for those for you know those singers the the Beyonce's, the Will Smith's, whatnot. But um, for every person you see um, in the in the credits of something, you'll see 
hundreds, if not thousands of other names of people who are in the entertainment industry. And that's what the Great Academy is trying to incorporate into its curriculum is how the performing arts has so many different aspects about it. Um, we're going to be teaching entrepreneurship. We're going to be teaching about um, entertainment law. We're going to be essentially trying to go ahead and give the kids that want to go into the entertainment industry a well-rounded picture um, as to what it would need to go ahead and be within their skill set to go ahead and have this as a career and actually make just as good money as any other career would be. <laughs> Um, the instrumental component is just to augment those other three. Uh, we will work with the dance department to provide music for them. We'll work with the drama department to provide uh, music for their shows. But more than anything, it's also uh, to record our students. We're working here on trying to uh, give an opportunity to our students and a space for them to explore their creativity and create music. What we're actually looking to do as we start this uh, great academy next year is to essentially offer up the curriculum to all of our choral students, all of our guitar students, and all of our piano students. The, those are our three CTE classes. So the recording part is we have a full functional, fully functional um, professional recording studio with uh, Pro Tools HD. We use industry standard equipment, um, universal audio, audio interfaces. Um, we also have beat machines for those people that are interested in music like hip-hop, electronic music. Um, we have uh, two rock bands, uh, uh, all-female rock band and a mixed uh, group rock band. Um, and we also have various different singer-songwriters and uh, who come in and record original music as well as uh, doing covers and um, writing lyrics for hip-hop. Something that we get to do with Adobe Suites next year because we're gonna get like the camera equipment and like professional cameras and stuff, something that we get to do is um, we get to make career portfolios. Wow. We get to do marketing and we get to do tutorials for incoming freshmen, whoever, like, they don't know what they're doing. We get to help them out with that. I like most how everyone who's in it loves what they're doing and they want to be a part of it because it's such a great family to be a part of and so it's changed my life really. Uh, honestly working with Mr. Churchill is uh, intimidating because he is such a venerable director and he just does such a fantastic job. It's honestly my um, honor to be able to call him my colleague and be able to work with him but I think one of the things that I bring is uh, is the technological component. Um, I, I have a background in audio recording and um, and computers, um, used to build computers. I, I actually, when I was younger, I had a, a internet hosting company. And so I bring a lot of the uh, understanding of the, of the uh, technological component. And so I think when we marry it with Mr. Churchill's fantastic performing program, and then the work that I'm doing with the band and piano and guitar, I'm a, I'm a flamenco guitarist um, as well. So I play flamenco guitar, but I also play uh, various different instruments. I play piano, I sing, um, and so I can bring that but what uh, separates me is that I, have, I bring that technological component that I can, that's so critical to CTE. And CTE, again, is career technical education. This, uh, we're, a, we're a career technical pathway that allows um, students the opportunity it, to enter into career right out of high school. And what we're looking to do is um, every kid, regardless of whether or not they're going to go through the academy, is going to get this introductory level knowledge of this. The kids that this really attaches onto, you know, they, oh, you know what, I, I kind of explore this further. Those kids are the ones we're going to go ahead and go into the second year of the program, the third year of the program with the capstone. So essentially, we're actually giving all of our performing arts um, kids this grounding in the entertainment industry that they can choose to either just, you know, I'm just going to stay performing in high school. That's just a fun thing. Or their second year in the program, I got to go farther and go ahead and learn more and get in more in depth. Your High Desert Sports Report is brought to you by Down Home Grill in Victorville on the corner of Bear Valley Road and Ridgecrest Drive. The world-class auctioneers at I-15 Auctions. Bid fast, bid last, I-15 Auctions. Midway Home Solutions in Victorville, providing highest quality home appliances at discount prices for six decades. And Iwan Zak Law Firm, trial lawyers for serious problems. 
High Desert Sports Training. The High Desert's only high-performance TreadX 3030 treadmill and hip machine. Call to schedule a free evaluation. High Desert Sports Training. And by the Community Table Restaurant in the Holiday Inn in Victorville. Supporting High Desert teams, athletes, and sports programs. This is your High Desert Sports Report. The Victor Valley's only weekly action highlights sports program. Showing daily on the Victor Valley Television Network. VictorValleyTV.com.